Hi there, this is Miss Caitlin, and today we are continuing our Around the World class. Today we're going to be visiting the country and continent of Australia. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, you guys, so here is everything that you're going to need for this project. It's a little bit of uh, the same, and then we're going to do a special technique today with our watercolors for one of the places that we're going to visit. So. Um, again, you're going to be needing your usual, you're going to need your papers for however you're going to want to do the project. Again, I'll explain kind of how we do this. You're going to need an eraser, pencil, and a sharpie, oil pastels, watercolor, a paper towel this time. Now, usually if you're doing watercolor, I bet you already have a paper towel with you, but you're definitely going to need one for today. And then some markers. Now, if you don't have one of these items, that's okay. Just use what you have, and I promise the project will still turn out great. Now let's go ahead and talk about how we can create this project. So you know with our Around the World series, um, we have two different ways we can go about making this project. If this is your first time joining us for the Around the World series, welcome, first of all. But I'm going to go over what exactly you can do. So I'm just setting all this stuff out of the way. Now the first method for the Around the World series that you can take is the um, book version where you create all of the pictures onto individual pieces of watercolor paper and then you would just like slide them into like a folder or into a sleeve and that way you can create a book. Uh, the other way you can do this is by making a giant wall map. So what you can do is you could take like two pieces of watercolor paper, you can tape them together in the back kind of like this and then you would draw the entire map onto this basically this big papers that you would make. Now, today we're going to be drawing our map horizontally side to side. That's different from what we usually do. Usually we draw our map vertical. That means up and down like this. But Australia is kind of wide, so we're going to do it from side to side this way today, okay? And then if you're doing the big giant map version, after you draw on your entire map onto this big paper, you would then draw our landmarks, which I will be showing us how to draw, onto little squares. So you could draw, like cut out maybe two inches by two inches for these little squares. Then you just draw the landmarks onto here and then paste them onto the map. All right, so let me just show you guys all the different things we're going to be visiting today. This one has a little secret to it. I bet you guys already know what this is, especially if you've watched movies from Disney. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I want you guys to do is I want you to take out that piece of paper that you want to do your map on. So if you are doing the book version like me, you're going to need your single piece of watercolor paper. If you're doing the giant map version, just take a minute, pause the video, and tape up uh, two papers together, and then we can start. Now, there's no practice draw for our Around the World series. We just get right into it because these lines are actually quite easy. And we want to have time for all of the places that we're going to go today. All right, so... I'm going to be using a Sharpie to draw, not because you should be using a Sharpie, but my camera has a hard time picking up pencil, so I want to make sure you can see. You should be starting off by using a pencil to draw. All right, so go ahead, grab your pencil and eraser, and let's get started. Now, Australia is a continent and a country. There's a little bit of discrepancy, a little bit um, of confusing wording surrounding how to talk about Australia as a country or a continent, but all you need to know, it's really big. It's basically its own continent and country. It is sandwiched between the Indian Ocean and the Pacific Ocean, as well as the Great Coral Sea. We're gonna start by drawing at the top of Australia. The first thing I want us to do is I want you to go at the top of your paper. Again, make sure it's horizontal side to side. And I want you to draw a wavy U-shape like this. All right, and remember you can always pause the video so that way you can feel comfortable going at your own pace. Next, I want you to go to the top of the U on this side. And I want you to draw a diagonal wavy line. All right, now next we're gonna go ahead and kind of do a little dip right here. It's not too much of one. So watch how I draw it first. I'm going to start from where we left off. I'm going to do a wavy line to about here. You can see it kind of just dips a little bit. So go ahead and draw that. All right, next we're going to draw a wavy C shape. It's going to be pretty long. So from that line, we're going to draw a wavy C shape down to about here. All right, next we are going to go up again. We're going to do a wavy rainbow. 
And then you're going to do a wavy line up. And then you're going to curve that up again and just do a wavy line all the way until you touch back to the line we made before. And then there we have it. And we have one little chunk of island that we got to do over here. So I want you to go to the bottom. And you're just going to make a wavy upside down triangle or like a wavy chip shape. And there we have it. All right, next we're going to go ahead and draw the flag of Australia inside of the mainland. So the flag of Australia is quite special. It is actually this very blue, beautiful flag. Um, it has lots of stars on it. And in this corner over here in the left hand corner, they actually have the Union Jack, which is a part of um, the British flag. If you remember our trip to the United Kingdom, that's because Australia used to be colonized by the United Kingdom. They have a very similar history to the United States if you learned US history. So for this, we're not going to do wavy lines like we have been. I actually want you to use your straight lines. Now you're going to do this in pencil like you have been. And what I want you to do is start from the top of your picture here. You're going to draw a line down and you're going to draw a horizontal line in. So you kind of get like this backwards L shape. Alrighty, since a lot of you have already drawn the flag of the United Kingdom, we're going to be doing it again here. So second time, it's going to be a little bit easier for you to remember, I'm sure, but I'm still going to walk you through it. So remember, we have that big red plus sign that's in the middle. So I want you to start right here and draw a number 11. Then I want you to draw a horizontal line and a horizontal line. Go below. Draw another number 11. Draw a horizontal line and a horizontal line. You should get a plus sign. All right, next, remember we had those red diagonal lines that come out from the sides. So we're going to go ahead and start from each little corner. And you're just going to draw a diagonal, a diagonal, a diagonal, and a diagonal. And then we're going to do what I call the pizza slices, which are the parts that show the white border and separate it from the blue on the flag. So what you're going to do is you're going to start maybe from the top here. You're going to draw a little straight line down and a diagonal line out. Go to this area. Straight line in, diagonal line out. Go here, straight line in, diagonal line out. Next. Straight line in, diagonal line out. I should say for this part, I know it can be a little hard on your eyes just to figure out where to put the lines. So if you need to pause the video and just, you know, double check what I've made to what you made, please feel free to do so. Next space, line in, line out. Straight line in, diagonal line back. And then this part, it's kind of small, but you can still do like a straight line and then a little diagonal. And then there you have it. So again, if you need to pause the video just to see how to draw this, please don't hesitate to do so. Now, if you want, you can write in the capital of Australia. The capital of Australia is Canberra, which is just about here. So if you want to write that in, just put a little dot and you can write Canberra. So C-A-N-B-E-R-R-Y. A. <laughs> Almost said Y, but it's definitely an A at the end. Now, although Canberra is the capital of Australia, the biggest city in Australia is actually Sydney, which you've probably heard of before. Sydney is right over here. We're going to talk about Sydney a little bit later. Alrighty, so at this point, if you want to add any extra things, like if you want to add like a whale's tail or a fish's tail or any sort of boats, you can. You can see on the map that I made, I added like a boat and like a giant fish's tail kind of coming off from the side there. So just take a moment to add that in. And when you're done, I want you to go ahead and put your pencil away and take out your Sharpie. And I want you to outline all of your pencil lines, except, except for what we did here for this Union Jack, okay? So go ahead and outline only the outline of Australia, this little island, and you can outline the capital as well. Alrighty, so go ahead and do that again. Pause the video, take care of outlining and resume. I'm going to go ahead and move on. 
So now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and start with our oil pastels. If you don't have oil pastel, you could use a crayon or your set of crayons that you have. You could even do this step in marker. Now the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna take our oil pastels and we're gonna outline these lines, kind of like what we did for um, our trip to the United Kingdom. So I want you to take your red oil pastel first. I want you to just outline the plus sign And then I actually want you to take your oil pastel and fill it in this time. Now, if you want to leave this blank and use watercolor to fill it in, that's fine. Go for it. I'm not going to stop you. But since this is kind of a small area, we're just going to fill it in with oil pastel. So when you're filling stuff in with oil pastel, remember, press hard and use short strokes. You don't want any little white spaces to be left over. And if your oil pastel gets short like this, you can just unwrap it. Let's make sure you get all of those teeny tiny little white spaces. Don't let any of them get past you. All right, once you're done with that, I want you to take your oil pastel and then I want you to outline just these diagonal lines that we made at the beginning. So just these ones with the red. Last but not least, you're gonna take a dark blue color, any dark blue you want, and you are just going to outline the rest of the flag that we didn't outline yet. You're not gonna fill in these little pizza slices. We're actually still gonna use watercolor because they lead into the rest of the flag. So all you're doing is outlining those little areas. All right. If you want, you could even outline the edges here where the white and the red go to the edge. It's kind of like this. Or if that's just too tricky, you can just outline this whole line that we made. All right, now I told you before there are some stars on the Australian flag. So there are two groups of stars. One is actually not a group, it's just one star. It's a seven-sided star and it goes over here. So I want you to take a white oil pastel or a white crayon. And I want you to make first, a, it's kind of hard to see. You know what, just for our video here, I'm gonna use a I'll use a gray so that you can see, but you should use a white oil pastel. So I want you to make first a vertical line. Then I want you to make a very wide X. Now count with me, how many sides is that? One, two, three, four, five, six. So you need one more, go to the widest part and you can just stick in another little point there. Now what I'm doing is I'm kind of making those edges into triangles just so that it looks more like a star. There you go. Now this star is super important. It's actually called the Federation Star for Australia and what it represents, it represents the six states of Australia being um, coming together and being unified and then the one extra point of the star is for any territories or any states that would come to Australia in the future. So that's what that is, the Federation Star. Next, we're going to do the stars that are grouped up over here. Now, these are a representation of the Southern Cross constellation. So it's actually something that you can see in the sky in Australia at nighttime. You can only see the Southern Cross constellation in the Southern Hemisphere. So um, the Australian flag has it to kind of, you know, remind them of their geography, where they are in the world. Now, these stars you can just make however you like. They're gonna be really small on our map, so just make a star in a way that's comfortable for you, but I am gonna tell you where to place them. The first star you want up here. This is gonna be the top of the constellation. So to make a really easy star, just make an X and then a vertical line. Then I want you to go to the side here, make another X 
with a vertical line. Go just across the way, make sure they're about equal, and make another star. And then I want you to go a ways down. Definitely don't make it all the way up here, but go a little way down and make another star. And that's going to be the bottom of the constellation. All right. Now there is one more part of the constellation. There's a little tiny star that's off to the side right here. So I want you to make the tiniest little star you can with your oil pastel. And it's okay if it doesn't look like it has any points. Just try your best. All right, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to add some white on top just so that when I go to paint it, this gray doesn't like look so dreary. All right, so at this point, while I'm doing this, if you want to take some time to fill in your extra things, like maybe you added a whale's tail or a boat, take your oil pastels and just go ahead and fill them in. And then if you want, you can take like a blue or even a green or a purple, and we can add waves to the water. Now, I already know what uh, color of water I want today. I actually want to do sort of like a blue-green for my ocean for Australia. So I'm going to take blue and probably some green oil pastel, and I'm just going to make a bunch of water lines down here. Now, there's actually, I think, a little more to the continent of Australia. There are some countries up here. They're a little bit away away, but we're not going to draw them today. But I would encourage you to do more research later about what countries those are. I think I might use the lighter green. As well, this country is not a part of the continent of Australia, nor is it a part of Australia at all. But there's another country kind of off to the side here and some other islands that go this way. The country that's over here is New Zealand. But again, we're just focusing on our main country of Australia here. That takes up the majority of the continent. All right. So that's all we're going to do with our oil pastel. So I want you to go ahead and take your oil pastels and set them aside. And we're going to take out our watercolor. All right. So I have my paint bucket over here. I'm left-handed, so I don't want to like try and you know accidentally tip over my water bucket. But what we are going to do is we're going to fill in our uh, flag first. So for the flag, it's this very deep, beautiful blue. It's kind of the same color blue that you might see on an American flag, um, but a little bit, I want to say it's just ever so slightly lighter. They could be the same though, just depending on what type of flag you find on uh, your research journey. But still take kind of a dark blue. First, fill in those little sections we left blank. Remember, those are our pizza slices. Now, the reason we didn't just fill those in with blue is we, again, we want them to look like they're a part of this main blue section. And then you can just fill in the entire country of Australia. And just don't forget the little island of Tasmania down here. Remember, as you get close to those edges, try and have your brush standing straight up and down so you can get into the corners. Now, depending on your blue, this is the case for me and probably what you're seeing. My blue paint, this particular blue, I know that it just needs a couple of layers to look very dark. Maybe that's happening with your blue paint as well. Now, paint is made uh, some paint is made differently, and just depending on the kind of blue that you're trying to do or make, that can have, um, it can basically change how dark or how light it's going to be. So as you see me work, I'm using a lot more color than probably you might have to. That's just so that it shows up really well and super dark for you to see. But I still want you to be very mindful of how much color you're using and how much water is on your brush. And try and do your long strokes even still. Now, you can see I painted right over my stars. Now, on my stars right now, they're looking pretty gray because I did them in gray so that you could see them when I was just making them. But for you, they're in white. 
Now you can see, even though I painted over it, there's some little speckles of the water still there. Don't worry, you can actually just take a paper towel later and you can wipe that away or just gently tap it off because oil and water don't mix. If I even take like a clean brush, you can see I paint right on top of it. Check it out, just cleaned it. So that's kind of a wet, not a wet into it, excuse me, a watercolor resist technique that we did for our mainland of Australia. All right, again, don't forget about this tiny little island right here. All righty. Next, we're gonna go ahead and fill in our ocean. I'm gonna to switch to a really big brush for this because this is a huge area. Over here, we have the Indian Ocean. Over here, we have the Pacific Ocean. And then right here, we have the Coral Sea, which we'll talk about more when we visit one of our landmarks. So for this, I am gonna do a wet into wet technique, which maybe you've seen us do before. I'm gonna take my brush with just water on it. I'm gonna paint a little section. So I'm gonna paint maybe just this top corner first with just water. I'm gonna take my paint, like I said, I'm gonna do blue green. So I'm gonna start with blue and I'm just gonna tap, tap, tap that color where I painted with the water first. Now, if I wanna add green and make it a blue green ocean, I just pick up some green and I tap, tap, tap that green with the blue and the water and me are kind of working together to cover the paper. Now you can also help the water spread the paint around. So don't be afraid to kind of, you know, take your brush, maybe just help that water get the paint into these tiny little areas. All right, so I'm gonna get more blue. I want to make sure you guys can see it. It looks like my camera is having a hard time picking up this very light green that I've put down. So I'm going to put some blue just so that you can see. Alrighty. So next you're just going to continue doing your wet into wet into these other corners. So I recommend always start by doing a section at a time. All right. So if you were in or you saw the recording for our K2 class for Australia, we talked about the coca, which is a type of animal. It's marsupial, so it's kind of the same as a kangaroo, but much smaller. They're about the size of a house cat, and they are considered one of the happiest, if not the happiest, animal on Earth. It's because they look like they have just a smile on their face all the time. It's probably just because of how their mouth is shaped. But I talked about how they were really a part of one little chunk of Australia, and it's just along the coast, and it's right on this coastline here that you find the coca. So if you're a part of that class, there's some knowledge for you as we make our map. Now, if you are not in uh, kindergarten, first or second grade, and you still wanna do that project, go for it. Um, it is intended for younger grades, but we learn a lot about that animal. So if you wanted to learn more about the coca, the happiest animal on earth, you can watch that video. And if you are a much older student, like maybe sixth grade, uh, fifth grade or fourth grade, or even you know third grade, I would encourage you to make the project even more advanced by adding more shading, or you could even add like, you know, more texture and things like that. But as you listen to it, it is intended for some younger grades. So that's the only difference. It's just, it's intended for a younger audience, but you definitely can try it out for yourself too. Now, as you're working with wet into wet guys, you might notice maybe a puddle or a pool of water forming on your paper somewhere. Now that happens because maybe you have a lot of water on your brush and you're just working and there's a lot of paint happening. That's okay, it happens. Take a paper towel, maybe not the same one that we're gonna use for later, but if that's all you have, that's fine. 
Just take a paper towel and gently tap it away and soak it up. Because if you leave that there, first of all, it's not really going to dry for a while. Second of all, it could leave a hole in your paper because of how wet it's making it. So if you have a puddle, just be sure to either spread it out, soak it with a paper towel, and don't leave it. Definitely take care of that puddle. And don't forget to get into this little section of Australia right here. All right, there we have it. So we finished our ocean and I'm gonna go ahead and clean off my brush and we can begin on visiting some of our landmarks. So go ahead and take your watercolors, set them aside, take your map, set it somewhere. I'm gonna set mine off to the side here. And hey, it looks like I got some watercolor on my desk, so I'm gonna go ahead and just wipe that off. If you need to wipe off your desk after that, don't hesitate. Let's clean your space. Okay. Guys, the first place that we're gonna visit is a place in Sydney, Australia. Now you've probably seen this place before. I'm gonna go ahead and get my paper ready for it. So if you're doing the um, book version like me, you're gonna need your next piece of paper. If you are doing the map version, you're gonna need one of your little squares. Now let me go ahead and take out the location that we're visiting. Beautiful, right? Now this is the Sydney Opera House. It's in Sydney, of course. It's a coastal city of Australia. And again, the biggest, uh, biggest city in Australia itself. Now, here are some fun facts about the Sydney Opera House. So it is a performing arts center it's for lots of different performing arts. And it's not just one big opera house. There's lots of different little rooms um, and places for multiple sort of um, performances to take place. It's considered one of the 20th century's most famous and distinctive buildings. That just means that you're really able to recognize it right away. If you ever see a picture of this now, you're going to be like, oh, that's the Sydney Opera House, no doubt. Now let's go ahead and get started on this. So you're going to need your pencil again. I'm going to be using my Sharpie. Now the Sydney Opera House, as we saw, it's pretty... It's pretty abstract. So I want you to really pace yourself, go slow, and just really, um, you know, if you have to pause the video, just go at your own pace and feel comfortable with the way that you're drawing, all right? Okie dokie. The first thing I'm gonna have us do is I'm gonna have us draw the ground line, which is actually the water and a part of the beginning of the building. So you're gonna have your paper horizontal side to side, and all you're gonna do is draw at the bottom, right about here on your paper, a long, line all the way to the other side of your paper. All right, next we're going to go ahead and draw kind of the start of the building. So I want you to start again, maybe over here. I want you to draw a short horizontal line, a line up, a line across to about here. Do almost a mountain shape. Do another horizontal line across and do another straight line down. And then you're going to draw a long horizontal line off the edge of your paper to the other side. This is the foundation that the opera house is on. Next, we're going to go ahead and draw kind of like those big wavy shapes. They kind of look like they could be those waves of the water, kind of, right? All right, so let's see. Which one should we draw first? Let's draw... Let's draw the front one first. So what I want you to do, start about right here, this little corner, right before we started that mountain shape. And I want you to draw a curved line that touches it. You don't want it too tall, probably about this big. Go back to where we started and draw a curved line that touches the other side of the mountain that we made right here. Next, I want you to go just about here on your uh, first part of the opera house. I want you to draw a curved line and then a diagonal line down. I also want you to draw just a short line in like that. These are like windows or things you can see out of and you can add more detail to those later. All right, we are gonna go back to this point and I want you to draw a curved line and then I want you to draw another curved line next to that, kind of like you just copied it. You have the first wave. 
Okay, next let's go ahead and draw the second wave of the Opera House. So I want you to go, we're going to try and draw another curved line right about here. So that's kind of at this point where our mountain ended on the other side. So I want you to start a little taller now from our second wave. And I want you to draw just a curved line that curves down and touches the end of our mountain on that side. Now we're not going to do another curve like this. This shape is actually going to be a little different. Uh, well, you know what? Make it easy for you guys. We'll do a curve. So I want you to start again from this point right here. And I want you to draw a big curve line that comes all the way down and touches the end right there. All right, good job. Remember, if you need to pause the video to just readjust that, that's fine. All right, heading on back. I want you to go right here to the point, curve line down, curve line down. And kind of the same deal, there's like a little chunk right here. I want you to draw a curved line. All right, now we're gonna do the biggest wave. So this one is actually a little bit easier. I want you to go now to this line that we made right here, right at the end. I want you to draw a big curved line up, taller than both of your waves to right about there. All right, next I want you to draw another curved line. This time we're gonna go this way. Almost like we were gonna make a V shape. Stop about there. You want this one to be much shorter. Then all I want you to do is connect those two lines with a rainbow. We're almost there. Same deal, just like we did for these two. I want you to go back to the tip. Curve, curve. Same thing on the inside. Draw a curved line. All right, you guys. Whew, we got like the main parts of the opera house down. Now there's more that we're going to draw over here, but I want us to finish up some of the lines that we have to make. So over here, I want you to go just about where we left off for this little circle or this little curve that we made. Do you see this place? I want you to start right here and all I want you to do is draw a line like that down. Same thing, I want you to go right here where we ended that curve and I want you to draw a curved line down. And then start right here, this line, right where we began. Remember, it's right after our mountain and you're just gonna draw a rainbow line up that touches our lines from before. All right, okay, you're almost there, pace yourself. Next, we're gonna go ahead and draw the last wave. It's actually going the opposite direction. There's even more of the Sydney Opera House. If we just kept going, there would be more we have to draw over here, but this is the main part that's easily recognizable. I want you to start right here from our corner. You're gonna draw a rainbow. Then you're gonna draw a big backward C down. Next, go back to that spot where we began, and I want you to draw a curved line down. Go back and draw another curved line. Next, I want you to close those with two more rainbows. And then you're gonna draw two straight lines and two straight lines. And then bam, you did it. You made the Sydney Opera House. Now, Let's go ahead and give this a good color. So for this, I want us to get out our marker as well as our watercolors again. So I'm gonna begin with the marker step first. And of course, I want you to outline all of this in Sharpie before we begin coloring. So go ahead and take your Sharpie and just outline everything first and then resume the video and we can begin on the marker. All right, so the marker step is actually super easy. All I want you to do is take your black marker and I want us to fill in these areas on our Sydney Opera House. Now, if you're not quite sure where these need to be, maybe you can pause the video after I filled in these sections. So that way you can kind of play a matching game with yourself and your own picture. All right, we have those filled in. Kind of think of them like the inside part of like a whale's tail or like a wave. 
or even like a seashell. Now these rainbow sections at the bottom here, this one and these two, we're also going to fill in. You could also fill this in with a purple if you wanted to, so you could do purple and black or blue. If it's nighttime, you could do orange, as if it's lit up. Okay. If you want, you can take a brown marker too, and you can add short vertical lines all across the bottom here. You could also do this with a small brush with watercolor once you have this area painted in, but just to make it a little faster, I'm going to go in with the brown marker now. All right, and that's all we're going to do for the marker. Now we're going to go ahead and do some painting. So again, I got my watercolors back here, got my paintbrush. For this one, I'm going to try and use maybe a medium-sized brush. I don't want the largest one. And I'm going to paint the Opera House first. Now, the Opera House is this like white color. Um, for this, just to show that it's white but also add some shading, I'm going to go in with our lighter blue. And all I'm going to do is go on each side. And I'm just going to add just a little bit of the blue very, very lightly. So I'm going on the right side of each of these main parts. All right, so I bet you're wondering, how long did it take to build the Sydney Opera House? We've talked about a lot of buildings that took a really, really long time to make, some that took like over hundreds of years. Now, the Sydney Opera House did not take over 100 years to make, thank goodness, right? But it did take 14, which is still a pretty long time. Now, fun fact, it was thought to only have to take four years. So you can imagine when they were planning the project, they're like, oh, it'll only take four years. That'll be fine. But and then it took 14 years instead. So quite a while. You can see I filled in this whole section. Trust me on this one, this just has to go with shading and where the sun is. You can also feel free to add lots of blue to these sections right here. If you want to add more shading, take the blue paint and you can add some to these parts. Now those curved areas that are underneath kind of these big shell shapes, they're going to be mostly that blue because they're covered. So you can just fill those ones completely in. You can see for the most part, I'm kind of treating the watercolor like I'm outlining the space, or I'm outlining those different shapes. Now, if you're having trouble getting your watercolor to turn lighter, maybe get like a plastic plate or a tray and add water to maybe a little part of the tray and then add a little bit of your watercolor and that should help you try and get that um, a little bit lighter. All right, so that's the Opera House. Now we're gonna go ahead and color in kind of the base that it's on. Um, I'm gonna use a yellow orange or just a light orange for this. I'm gonna use my long strokes and just fill it in. Now, if you did these vertical lines in marker, especially a water soluble marker, that just means if you put water on that, it's going to kind of dissolve and try and blend away. That's okay. It'll just add to kind of the texture and the shade that we have going on here. If you don't want it to go away, you could use a non-soluble marker, so like a brown Sharpie, or you could just go back later on top of it with your marker, or you again can do it with watercolor later. All right, our ocean. Now we're not gonna do, we're not gonna fill in this whole part here of the ocean. We kind of wanna make it look like the ocean has some shine. So you're gonna take your brush and I have to kind of move it this way just so that it's comfortable for me to paint. So you do the same. All you're gonna do is you're gonna take your blue paint. You're first gonna outline this area right here, right next to the base. And then what you're gonna do, you're gonna take your brush 
You're going to use the side, and all you're going to do are a couple of strokes using kind of the tip of your brush to make it look like there are waves and that the water is shining from the sunlight. So you're not trying to fill in the whole space. You're just trying to make it look like there's water that's moving and it's shiny. Pretty easy, right? Last but not least, we're going to go ahead and do the sky. Now, you can choose to do the sky however you like, but I'm going to do more wet into wet. And I'm going to do a sunset or a sunrise. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my big brush. I'm just going to paint pure water. I'm going to pick a sunset color. I'm going to do light orange on one part. I might do a red violet on the other. I'm going to tap, tap, tap. And if I want it to look more like clouds or maybe that it's a little bit like there could be clouds in the sky, I'm going to do circular motions with my brush, pushing the paint around to where I want it to go. Don't forget to get these little areas on the side. You don't have to try and do circular motions in these areas, just get it covered. And I'm going to continue using the orange and the purple in the sky. Ooh, that's pretty dark. That's okay, I'll spread it out later. If you want to do wet into wet in some parts of your sky, but maybe do regular painting in another part, that's fine too. That might make your picture look even more interesting. So again, it's really up to you how you want to do this. Again, if you want to go for kind of a very fluffy look, try doing circular motions with your brush and see how that turns out. I'm going to do a little bit more of this red violet down here, kind of pushing it into the sides. Again, use the very tippy top of your brush. The very tip, stand it straight up and down so that you can get into those little edges. All right, almost there. Let me get that little section. Fill in any little white spaces. For the sky, we definitely don't want it to look like we forgot to fill in a space. So even if you are trying to do white fluffy clouds, do be sure to try and get all the little white spaces. And there we go, all done. Next, we're gonna go ahead and visit our last landmark. I think you guys are really gonna enjoy this one. So again, wipe off your desk if you've got any extra, just little water colors hanging around. I know I did just then. And our last place that we're gonna visit is someplace very important, the Great Barrier Reef. Now, if you've seen the movie Finding Nemo or even Finding Dory, I'm not sure if this is in Finding Dory, but definitely in Finding Nemo, they actually start off their story in the Great Barrier Reef, which is off the coast of Australia. So if you look back to our map, the Great Barrier Reef is right over here. Now, the Great Barrier Reef is super important. It's a very beautiful place, obviously. It's the world's largest system of coral. It has over 2,900 individual reefs located in the Coral Sea. Now, we are gonna go ahead and draw this for ourselves. This is actually super easy, and this is where that paper towel is gonna to come into play. So go ahead and take out your last piece of watercolor paper or your last little square, depending on the type of uh, project you decided to do, and let's go ahead and begin. So remember, turn it horizontal side to side, take out your pencil, and let's start. I'm going to be drawing again with my Sharpie just so that you can see. All right, so before we even draw our little friends, we're going to actually draw uh, every, the two characters from Finding Dory, or not Finding Dory, Finding Nemo. And we're going to start with the coral first. So for this, I want you to go to the bottom of your paper. I want you to draw a big rainbow, almost as if you were going to draw a circle, but stopped halfway. All right. Same thing again, I want you to start the, from the top of this coral, I want you to do a big rainbow, almost like you were going to draw a circle. All right, good job. We're going to draw some coral and anemones off the side here. 
So for this, I want us to draw kind of like a long bean shape. I'll show you what I mean. I'm gonna start from the edge of my paper. I'm gonna draw a curved line up, wavy line down, curve around, and go back in. So I'm kind of making like this long bean shape. So give that a try. And then you're gonna do one more on top. So I'm gonna connect it to the one I made. I'm gonna do a C shape up, curve line across, backward C, and we'll go back to that coral, or that anemone. Then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw the base. So I'm gonna go to the bottom, I'm gonna draw a curved line in. Same thing over here, start here, curved line in. Looks like I got some space here, so I am gonna go ahead and draw also another curved line. And then we're gonna draw some rocks down here, kind of for the coral to sit on, so you can just draw wavy line and a wavy line. Now the next one we're gonna draw is very fun. It does not have to be precise at all. All I want you to do is draw a wavy line up, and then down, up, and then down, and do that for a while until you come back down to the other side. So you can decide how big you want this to be. Just make kind of a sort of an abstract shape. And then over here, we're gonna make another kind of coral. So I want you to do a curved line up and a curved line up. I want you to do a long rainbow and a long rainbow. I want you to do a curved line around and then draw another long rainbow. Curve up, draw another long rainbow. Curve up again, another long rainbow, and then turn that into a long U shape and go back up. Do another long rainbow. Curve around and draw a line up that touches the top of your paper. Draw a U shape. And then you can draw another abstract line that connects back to that one from before. Then bam, we've got our coral. Now we're gonna color this in and make it look as fancy as it did on our example, but now we're gonna draw our fish. So you can draw whatever kind of fish you want, but if you wanna draw a clownfish and a surgeon fish, this is how you're gonna do it. For the clownfish, I want you to draw a C shape. I want you to draw a curved line and another curved line. They should kind of go towards each other. Then I want you to draw a backward C for the clownfish's tail. Go to the top of your fish, draw a big rainbow and a little rainbow. Go to the bottom, draw a little rainbow, or sorry, a U shape. We're gonna need a fin. So for the fin, I want you to draw two lines out, curved line to connect, draw an eye, draw a smile, and then we're gonna add the stripes. So all you're gonna do is draw number 11, number 11, and a number 11 for some stripes. So three number 11s. Next for the surgeon fish, we're gonna draw again a C shape to begin. I want you to draw a big curved line and a big curved line and then connect. You don't have to connect with a backward C. Just connect it almost like we were gonna make an oval. For the surgeon fish tail, I want you to draw two straight lines out and then connect. Then for their fence on the top, they're a little tricky, but try your best. You're gonna do a long rainbow that finishes right at the tail here. And then do the same thing on the bottom. For their fins, they're kind of the same as their tail. I want you to draw two straight lines and then connect. Draw an eye, draw a smile. And then we're gonna draw another little upside down mountain here. You can draw a V shape. And now we need to draw in the patterns of the certain fish, which are super easy. So go to the fin. I want you to draw a diagonal line on the fin. I want you to draw a little line right here. 
draw a curved line around like this. Draw a curved line around again. Draw a line here, and then you're done. All right, so again, pause the video, take some time to just sharpie all of that, and then we're gonna go ahead and start our coloring. So again, pause the video, outline everything with your Sharpie, and then we're gonna move on to the coloring. All right, if you are resuming the video, I assume you are ready to go. We are gonna go ahead and move in with some marker first. So get your marker, let's fill in our fish. Now for our fish, what you can do for the surgeon fish is you can use the black marker to fill in just this part that we did on the body. Remember all those little sections we made? So you're gonna to wanna to fill in this area with black. No, it's a little tricky to see, so you can pause the video and just kind of play the matching game with yourself to fill that in. Next, we're gonna take yellow. You're gonna fill in the tip of the fin and the tail with yellow. And then surgeon fish have blue bodies. So take a dark blue. You could even take a light blue if you wanted. And just fill in the rest of this fish. Be careful to go around the yellow fin. Okay. Last but not least, the clownfish. You're gonna fill in everything but his stripes. So I'm filling in all the things that were not his stripes. So those number 11s that you made, you're not gonna fill those in. All right, so our fish are all done. Now let's go ahead and talk about our coral and our anemones and different algae and little zones down here. So while well, we've got our orange marker in hand, why don't we take this and do, you're gonna do short, vertical lines all on the top of this first anemone or coral right here. You can do as many or as few as you like. Go ahead and put that one away. Take out your yellow. Same thing, go to this one. Do short strokes on the top. All right, for this next part, you can choose what color you want, but I'm gonna do a pink. And on this coral right here, I want you to do really, really short, almost like dots, all over this coral. You don't wanna fill the whole thing in, you just wanna do dots like this. All right, for the next one, I'm gonna do red, but you are free to choose a different color if you want. Same thing. You can make the strokes a little bigger this time because this coral is much bigger. We're gonna do it all over. All right, and you could even take yellow if you wanted to. You could add a couple of little yellow spots in there. All right, now you're gonna go in with another pink. We're gonna head over to this abstract shape here. And all you're gonna do is you're gonna make it look like there are lines that are just coming up from the center. You can have a lot of fun with this. You can draw them where you like. They don't have to be super precise at all. It's just drawing a bunch of these lines all over. Okay, we're almost there. Let's take our brown marker. Now on these parts here, kind of like the part that's connecting these guys together, I want you to do curved lines all on these areas here. Going back with the dark blue, do some short lines on our little rocky areas here. For the one that's closest to us in the foreground, I might recommend making it darker. So if you have an even darker blue marker or a purple, you can go ahead and use that one to fill it in. 
You can take your purple. You just do the same thing. Now for our last little coral that's hanging out over there, it kind of looks like a tree or like a vine. You can take whichever green you like. I'm going to do a light green. And you're just going to do little dots all on the inside. All right, there we go. So now let's take our markers, set them aside, and we're gonna go back with our watercolors again. Seems appropriate that we're doing watercolors for something that's under the water. Now for this, you can use really any size brush, just make sure it's a pretty big one. And what you're gonna do is you are gonna pick a color that's similar to the marker that you put down. So for this red area here, I'm gonna choose reds and probably purples for shading. And all I want you to do is take your color, I'm probably gonna use probably this uh, more red orange. And kind of like you're doing wet into wet, you're just gonna add this color all over the coral. I'm thinking this brush might be too small for this area, so I'm gonna pick up my big brush. I'm gonna pick up my red. I'm gonna cover it all. Now don't worry if that marker starts to blend away. We want that. It's gonna to add to the texture as well as the look of the coral. You can see I'm kind of adding in a darker purple towards the bottom just to make it look like they're shading. So you can try and do the same thing for yours. Now before that dries, I want you to take your paper towel. I want you to crumple it up. This is the one that we were saving. I want you to tap, 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 tap. And that way you're gonna create kind of this texture on the coral to make it look a little bit more like it's coral. Now again, you can feel free to add as much color as you like. We are kind of doing sort of a wet into wet technique, so you can do little strokes. Sort of just make it look more like coral. You could even add in, like I said, yellow into this red space. We'll make it look really cool. It'll start to make it make like areas that are orange. You can really play with it and take off paint with the paper towel. All right, moving right along, I'm gonna go into this space here. I'm gonna fill that in with the red violet. It's kind of like a pinky color in our palette. So I'm gonna take my brush, I'm gonna fill this whole area in, and I'm gonna take my paper towel once more and kind of tap into one area where I wanna take off some of that watercolor. If I want a certain part of it to look darker, I might take a dark purple and just add it into like the corners. All right, so now I have some smaller areas. I'm gonna to switch to my medium brush. I'm gonna go in with my purple for the purple area. Being very careful around the edges. If you want to also do the paper towel technique on these edges here, or even the rocky areas, you can. For this area, I'm probably going to just do blue, a dark, dark blue. I'm fill that in, make sure I get all my little white spaces. Awesome. And now I'm gonna go ahead and do these top parts here. So I'm gonna start with the yellow. I'm of course going to go with a yellow paint and go on top of my marker what I did. Now, depending on your type of yellow marker, you're probably still gonna be able to see it through. I think on the camera you can even see uh, a majority of the yellow marker still shining through. But if you want it to look more 3D, I recommend taking like an orange, and just kind of tapping in that color on the bottom and letting the water spread it out for you. If you feel like you've added too much, that's okay. Take your paper towel and tap it off. Otherwise, you can try and just spread it out a little bit by doing short little taps. 
All right, moving right along, we got the watercolor up here. I'm gonna go in with the yellow-orange. I'm gonna really spread that out. I don't want it to be too dark. So for this, it's very uh, relaxed, actually. You don't have to feel like you're being super precise or accurate with the watercolor. A lot of it is kind of just having fun and moving the color around to places that you want it to be. Obviously, we're still thinking about shading and making sure that we have our fundamentals down, you know, adding highlights and shadows, but we're, there's a lot more fun with it instead of trying to get, you know, the shadow exactly perfect because you're letting the water and you work as a team to put it where you want it to be. So you can see I just took red watercolor and I just put it on the bottom, kind of for some shading like we were talking about. Now for the brown area, interestingly, I am not going to use a brown to fill that in. I'm actually going to use the red violet, which is like a pinkish purple or a reddish purple. And I'm going to fill that in with this color. You could even do this in red if you wanted to. I'm just going to take that color, fill it in. The brown color will make it dark because the brown marker is going to dissolve into that and just shade it for us. All right. Now for these last two areas, this is obviously a very pinky color um, and this is a green. So go ahead and choose the color you want to do that matches these two and fill them in. Again, for the pink, I'm probably going to go in with this red-violet color. I'm actually just going to paint this normally instead of doing the wet and to wet that we did for the coral down here. Still being mindful of how much I have on my brush. One more round, and then again, if you hear that air conditioning sound, I apologize. It's very hot in California, very hot in the studio. Again, you can take your paper towel, crumple it up, maybe find a clean spot, and just tap, tap, tap some of that watercolor off. If you want there to be more of a difference, because maybe <clears throat> as you worked, you weren't able to get all of, a lot of watercolor off because your paint dried too fast, just be careful, but you could add very gently another layer of watercolor and then try again. But I wouldn't try that too many times because you do risk um, tearing a hole in your paper or just uh, making it crumble. All right, last but not least, I'm going to go ahead and work on this little coral area over here. Adding in my green. Might use a darker green just to make it so that kind of seem more like it's in the background because it's farther away. Those little green spots we did in marker are going to fade into that color. <clears throat> and if you want to be super advanced, take some yellow and only fill in the top parts. And the yellow you can kind of push into the green. That's going to make it look like you shaded it and it looks more colorful that way. All right, there's only one thing left to color and that's the water. So for this, I'm going to use the lightest blue I have because again, I have like these different blues and lots of really dark, cool colors. And our little surgeon fish is also quite dark. So I'm going to take my light blue. I'm going to really spread it out. So that way I can make sure I see everything. All right, for the sake of time, I'm gonna let you continue with that. But again, I'm gonna show you what this picture looks like when you're completely done. So check it out, looks like this. And that is the finished Great Barrier Reef. Now, the last fact I wanna tell you about the Great Barrier Reef is that a lot of it today actually doesn't look like this. More than half of the Great Barrier Reef um, is actually what we call the coral is bleached. That just happens when the water that the coral is in gets too hot. So it doesn't survive because it kills off some of the food that the coral eats, like certain algae. 
So a lot of the coral in the Great Barrier Reef is no longer colorful like this, but there are still some parts that you could visit that are still super duper colorful like you see in Finding Nemo. So with that, that is the end of our project. I'm going to go ahead and let you just keep coloring and finishing that up. All right, so again, that's the end of our project. I hope you had a lot of fun visiting Australia. The Sydney Opera House, as well as the Great Barrier Reef are super beautiful. And we even got to talk a little bit about the coca. Now, I would encourage you to do some more research. Remember your bonus challenge for this is just to find another landmark, animal, or just thing in Australia that's super famous that maybe Australia is known for and share it with me on the Fibo Village Facebook page. As always, thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in our next travel. Have a great rest of your day. Bye for now.